Hi, I'm Paul Germain. Welcome to another session of Smart Voting. You know, if you've watched the show before, you understand that uh, we cover a wide variety of topics, from hurricane protection to man overboard. And the basic idea is to give you information that will help you make smarter decisions and have more fun in the water. And this show today falls in line with that. We're at uh, Winninghoff Boat Builders in Rowley, Mass. to get a good grip on how they build custom aluminum boats. And joining us to guide us through that tour, if you will, is Bill Stone, the president. Bill? How you doing, Paul? Good to nice see to you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you. Well, we got a really cool show here today. I think people are gonna really enjoy it. But before we get into it, can you share a little bit about your involvement in boating and a little bit about Winninghoff Boat Builders? Well, uh, when I first discovered boating, I was probably about 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And I had a boat that I had gotten from my dad. Mm -hmm. And we went out in a few times. And uh, I just did develop an interest for that. And ever since then, I've had more boats. And some of the times my parents hadn't even thought I had a boat. <laughs> I would keep it in the river. I never registered it or nothing since I was 14, 15 years old. Didn't know anything about that. I didn't have a car, so I'd walk down to the river, jump in the boat for the, for the summer day, and off I went exploring. All right, so you've been around boats a long time. How about Winninghoff Boat Works? How long have you been involved in this operation? What, what do you do here? I um, came to Winninghoff Boats in probably around 1991, 92, mm -hmm. looking for a job. I had lost my other job that I had for a, quite a, many years. Mm -hmm. So I came to Winninghoff Boats figuring I'm going to be scraping bottom paint off a boat for the summer till I figured out what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I get here and I know they're building boats. So I decided to like fill out an application and Probably four days later, I never left. Wow, so you've been here a long so time. I've been here for <laughs> quite a, I've been here 26 years. Six years. And you guys build a variety of aluminum boats here at, at the shop, yes. right? Yes, Any, anything from, I've built, the smallest boat I've built was 12 feet, and the biggest boat was 64 feet. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that was built in this shop right here. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, you've obviously got a lot of experience building an aluminum boat, so uh, why don't we get right into the show? All right, let's go. Okay. Well, Bill, as you know, covering this topic of custom aluminum boats, is, that's a really huge subject. And there's no way we can cover all the points, but we can cover some of the important ones today, I think. And, you know, I can imagine a lot of people are sitting there in front of their TV going, well, why would anyone want to buy a custom aluminum boat? Are there a couple of reasons that normally spring to mind for most people? Yeah, there's several reasons for that. And one of them is they're durable, lightweight, fuel efficient. Yeah. Uh, easy repair. Yes. You can pretty much build the boat any way that you want to build it as yeah. far as being a custom boat. If you wanted a console forward, more a side console, you can do that as wherever you want to do that. You right. can add storage space where there might not be storage space in another boat. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much you can add whatever you want on that. Uh, engine power, um, uh, jet, whether it be a jet drive, uh, propeller, inboard, outboard. Stern drive, all that stuff can yeah. all be determined on what kind of custom boat you want. And that's probably more important to the experienced boater, right, that knows what they need, right? Not a newbie, right. but someone that's been around right. boats. They say, oh, that wasn't working, that's not working. Let me get a custom boat that fits my needs, right? Right. Yeah. My experience in that part is that everybody knows how a boat should be and what they think, but my experience is there's no right or wrong everybody has their own idea to a custom boat or what they want to use it for or something. Right, so you get custom and then the aluminum, like you said, is right. it's light, it's Lightweight, strong, it's durable. Easy to fix. Easy to fix. Yes. Fuel efficient, right? Fuel it's efficient, light, So you yep. don't need the bigger motors I don't to know the it, percentage right? of how much le less it weighs than fiberglass or mm -hmm. wood, mm -hmm. but it's considerable. Yes, yes, which makes a difference you if know, you're pushing it down the road. A typical boat, 25 feet, what might weigh around 7,000 pounds, I would say. Okay, okay. Um, so there's probably have quite a bit lighter yeah. than a fiberglass boat right. the same size. Yep. How about, you know, okay, so someone says, oh, that makes sense. Lighter, stronger, custom, that all sounds good. How does the process typically start when you get engaged? Does someone see maybe some information about the boats on the web or something? Um, usually I get a phone call 
and someone wants me to someone wants to see what kind of projects we got going on and what availability there are and I usually talk to them for a while and then I tell them what I can do and what what is offered get a basic idea of what they're looking for mm -hmm. talk to my local designer and he t ends up talking to them and what they do is they we all talk together as a party and yes. we come to terms on what is required for the particular boat that we're going to build mm -hmm. and then we go forth and get some drawings some sketches and and then it, eventually it turns into a blueprint so that we get build the thing and the customer will have a better idea what the boat looks like yeah. before it's even built. Wow, okay, so they get the idea, you bring in the designer, you guys have a kind of a three-way brainstorming session, right. decide on the boat, decide on the price, yep. and get going. Yep, Excellent. exactly. All right. And that usually takes, sometimes it can take six months or it can take up to a year before the actual project yes. starts. Yeah, that's amazing. It's huh? just, you know, how much forward they want to go into it. Yeah. Well, build to build a custom aluminum boat, you need some drawings. You were just talking about that. We've yep. got some drawings behind us here. Can you explain, uh, in particular, starting with this drawing, what we're looking at and what's important? Right, right here in this drawing right here is the side view of the boat and the top view of the boat. Mm -hmm. And what I'm looking at is I'm just looking at what, if I was the customer, I'd explain this is where your console's going to go, this is where your seating arrangements are. You're going to have a couple hatches here and a hatch here. The engines will be right there, and this guy's got some push knees on his boat, yeah. and he's got an engine guard mm -hmm. with a tow post to keep the rope down. Okay. And on this drawing is a little mm -hmm. more detail. What you actually can see is kind of see through the boat, so you can see the fuel tank down in here. Yeah. And it shows you the console on the floor. Mm -hmm. It shows you frame spacings here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Yeah. And then this view right here just kind of cuts the boat in half. All right. So on this side of the view, it shows the back of the boat looking forward, and mm -hmm. on this side of the view, it shows the front of the boat looking back. Oh, okay. A lot so of information on the drawing. That's yeah. a, what, well, a you scale, also see what, an inch to half it's inch? It's a half to inch a equals one foot on these particular drawings. Yeah. Some drawings are a little different. Okay. So those are good overview drawings. Now, if we move over here, to the, we've got another drawing we like to point out here in the middle. This, uh, this one, one here? here? Yeah. Can this you one here that? is an outline of the keel. Yeah. And you the can see basically you the backbone of the boat mm -hmm. and the shape of the boat. Oh, yeah. And usually it comes in two or three parts. So I would weld these parts together to make this one piece because I'd buy a piece of plate 25 feet long and I'd have a lot of waste. Yes. yes. So therefore we make it in a bunch of pieces. All right, so that's a key drawing. Yeah. And then uh, let's move uh, slowly to the other drawings on the other side over here because you've got some drawings of the frames, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I got a couple drawings of the frames. Mm -hmm. We'll start out with this one here which would be the first frame oh, that yeah. I put up. And it's actually kind of a bulkhead too. And that just means it's waterproof, watertight. And then down here we have another bulkhead, which is this one would be the front frame. And this, this is just one I picked that's in the middle of the boat. Mm -hmm. It happens to be frame number four, okay. which is a bulkhead. Yeah. And then down here we have frame number seven, which if you notice, there's a cutout right in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just to save weight. Oh, I see. And okay. it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be watertight. Okay. It gives you a little more breathable, gives you a little more storage if you need to get under there. Right. Well, Bill, you know, once you get the drawings together, you can see an outline to scale, what are the pieces are also going to look like, and then you've got to get the materials together and start to build it. Now, uh, you need different types of aluminum for different parts of the boat, right? Yeah, I, basically I use three different thicknesses of aluminum. Mm -hmm. One piece of 3 8 which would be the keel and the chine. That's heavy duty stuff it's there. It's pretty thick, it's 3 8 <laughs> thick, it runs all the way through, and then the chine runs all the way through the boat too. Okay. And then I use quarter inch for bottom plates. Oh, it's yeah. just a little thinner, but pretty durable. Yeah. And then the frames and the sides, are 3 sixteenths thick. Wow. So and the, the alloys all 5086. Okay, that's a marine so that's a grade marine aluminum. Grade aluminum. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So then, now, do you make the console of a different material? Uh, a different grade? 50-52. Uh, 50-52, why is that? Because um, you can bend it. You I can't see. bend this stuff, it cracks. It's pretty, yeah. Yeah, it's brittle. So pretty strong stuff. You can yeah. bend it, 
if you got to put a long, big radius in it, you can't bend it with a knife edge. Okay. So These are the primary material. So you use the right material for the right application. You don't try right. to build the whole thing out three days. No, <laughs> no, you would not. <laughs> it would be heavy. Very heavy, yes. Right. Okay, so you, so you get the materials together, and then uh, I guess the first thing, when you know, I've seen a lot of people build boats, and they build them what they call turtle fashion. So if you imagine a turtle shell, that's basically what they do. They Basically, yeah, they build flip them. the boat over and they build out the shell right. and then they flip it right side. Now, you don't do that, right? No, I don't do that. No. How I, do you do it? I do it right side up from start to finish. Okay. Um, to me, it's efficient that way to me. The way I build it is efficient and there's an issue with the smoke and welding where you're not underneath the thing, yeah. breathing smoke. Yeah. Um, you don't want that. That kind of thing. All right. Um, so you could build it either way. Okay. I prefer to do it right side up. Just right side up. So the first thing you do is you take this very heavy duty uh, material, the, keel the piece. threes, the keel piece, yep. and, you, and you cut that out. Yeah, I'll cut that out and then I'll lay it up on some elephant stands which actually support the boat as I'm building it. Okay. And the, if you can see right here, there's yep. one right there underneath there. And supporting right here, the keel. Right on the keel. And the keel goes all the way back. This is what, 26 feet? 25 feet. 25 feet. So that entire thing is supported by the cranes overhead. Yep. And those elephant stands. That's correct. Right? Yep. So you get that in place first. And then what have you got here? This is kind of a mock-up. This, this would be the keel, Yeah, right? so this is a mock-up of the keel. Yep. And what I do is I'll start at the bow, mm -hmm. and I'll place one of these frames in here. Okay. As you see, they interlock to each other. Yes. So it makes it very strong. Yes. And it kind of lines the boat up itself. Okay. So at this point, I'll just tack that in spot. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take another frame. Just lay them all the way back. Which like I that. showed earlier, different frames, shapes. As you go yes. back, they different get angles. flatter. Yes. These just happen to be all the same. Yeah. So I'll do all this all yeah. the way down to the boat. Okay. I'll line them all up. Mm -hmm. Make sure the boat's straight and flap, not flappy and everywhere. Yes. And then um, once I get all them on, I, you know, I'm tacking them as I go along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after I get these frames in, I'll take st stiffeners that go just on the outside of the keel. They come out further and further, and that makes the the project look like a a fish bone at a point, yes. and it starts getting strong and rigid. Yeah, yeah And yeah. everything kind of locks itself together. Yeah, yeah. So you really can't mess it up. Well, Bill, you just did a, a great job of helping to explain how the, uh, the backbone, or the keel, fits with the frames. Uh, and here we are on the inside of the boat. Can you show people so we can show what the end result of that process is? Okay, so now what, we're, what we got going on here is here's the keel right here. Uh-huh. And that's all welded to the bottom plate. Yes. And this is the stiffener right here. That's the stiffener, They're yeah. pretty much 12 inches on center. Okay. And right over here we have another frame. Okay. And you can see down in here how everything's all locked together and welded. Oh, yeah, yeah. So keel, so keel frame, frames, and then the stiffeners. Stiffeners, yes. bottom plates. Yeah, okay. And you can see the welding. Yeah, beautiful. Well, Bill, once you create the, uh, the skeleton, if you will, mm -hmm. the keel, the frames, the stiffeners, the next thing to do is to put on the bottom plates, right? Correct. Now, these are, this is quarter inch, these plates right here. here that we're talking about. That, that's some pretty heavy duty stuff. Yeah, it's quarter inch thick, so how 25 do you, feet long. <laughs> <laughs> how do you put it on the frame? You've got this framework, you've got the skeleton. Do you start in the stern and then move your way forward? I actually lay the plate down on the floor a little bit, underneath some more of those stands. Okay. And I get under there and I lift it up and push it against the keel. Okay. Which is this piece here. And then and do you tack it on I with know, a I weld? I gotta make sure, once I get it up in place, I gotta make sure those plates, aren't, one's not forward more than the other. Yes. Because if I start tacking that together at that point, and I wind up here after it's all tacked together, I gotta break it apart, because this won't be even. Yes, yes, this seems. And this right is in a here. pretty critical part right in here. Right. So when I start at the back, the first frame is pretty flat, the next one is not as flat, but every time I bring it up to the next frame, it brings me closer to this shape where the V is right in the front here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at a certain point, I can't use any more clamps no more. Okay. Because I can't get in between these two spaces here. Mm -hmm. There's not enough room. Right. So now I'm back here and I'm pretty good. So I'll take these pieces here mm -hmm. and I'll actually weld them onto the plate, which 
when I before I weld them on, they'll be down here. Okay. And then when I weld them on, then I'll take the plates and I'll squeeze these things together. All right. To bring this up to this point here. Wow. And hold it, and someone will tack it for me. Okay. All right. And then uh, hopefully it stays, and I can <laughs> position it in another position and make it all fair in here. I see. Yeah. This wow. is a pretty tough spot to bend. Yeah. Being quarter inch thick. Got to know what you're doing. Yes. Well, Bill, once you put these uh, bottom panels on, the next thing on many boats is they have a chine. Is that mm -hmm. an important dimension? And uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the chine keeps the spray coming off the bow so the boat doesn't get you wet inside. Right. And when I'm ready to weld it, I start making sure it's a nice, even, open corner weld with no, no nothing in there, no grease, no impurities that'll contaminate the weld. Because this is a critical seam yeah, right here, right? Yeah, all these seams here are critical. Of course, they gotta be watertight. Yes, yes. You don't want the boat to leak. Right, 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 so. all right. So the chine, you put the chine in, the and chine then you weld in. it. Yep, All right. and weld all that and to, the, to the side and the bottom. All this will get welded eventually. Okay, and what are you using for welding equipment? I'm today? using a Miller machine with a MIG gun. Mm -hmm. What it is, is just a MIG gun. You pull the trigger, an inner gas comes out and a wire comes out. Oh, yeah. And as soon as the wire hits the work, it starts melting wire. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. Can you show <laughs> us? Sure. All right, let's take a look. Ready? Yep. I'm going to step back a little bit. You get the helmet there. All right, here we go. Okay. Well, Bill, once you got the the bottom points on, and you got the chine on, you got to put the sides on, and this is uh, this is what is a three sixteenths. So that's still pretty heavy duty metal. Yeah, you got to work right here. with. It's yeah, pretty thick. Yeah, it's pretty thick. How do you go about doing that? Well, what I have is I got the side plate ready to be in position. Yeah, 25 feet long. 25 right? feet long. Mm -hmm. I have it hanging with the crane. Okay. This is just an example of just how like I'd this. hang it. Okay. Of course, this plate is going to be monstrous. Yes. So what I actually do is I got to get this piece right up in here. Okay. Just just about right like that, so yes. that it can line up with this outer chine. Yes. Which will be like that. Okay. Which the plate's already up in there. Yep. Yep. So we get that. So my next spot would be to put a little bit of weld right in okay, there. Tack it there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then once that's tacked in there, mm -hmm. I'll move down a little more and tack it again here. Okay. And then again here, all okay. the way down to the boat. Okay. All right. Till I get to the very end. All right. So just keep moving the yep. crane and moving. Keep moving the, the crane down keep there. Keep tacking it in. Yep. And then afterwards, I'll just have a little bit of. Um, you know, each time I move down, I have to push it in a little bit here. Okay. And a little bit up top all to right. keep that shape. Coax it a little bit. Yeah. 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 So it's all bulwark. There's yeah. really no jig to do it. Okay. There's no, um, I don't think there's a machine that can do it. Right. Just a couple of guys that are going to push it in and listen to one guy. Yeah. And then weld it up. And then weld it up. Weld it up. Yep. Yeah. Bill, you know, when you're building an aluminum boat, custom aluminum boat, there's some nuances of it that you know, an experienced guy like yourself would understand. As I look over this boat, I see these slight uh, indentations here. What, what causes that, and is there a way to smooth that out? That's from the welding process on the other side. Mm -hmm. I call it a, um, a proud mark because it actually sticks out a little bit. Yep. And what happens is every place I put a weld, a significant weld, it does that. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to grind that down. All right. If you were to paint the boat, it would show up a lot more painted. Yeah. It's just something that I do, and I think most boat builders do do that too. All right. So let me give you an example. Yeah, show me how you do it. Well, Bill, one of the many elements of putting an aluminum boat together, you've got the, got the bottom panels, you've got the side panels, you've got the chine, and then you've got this side deck, right? Yes. How does this go on? Well, I start at the very front of the boat, mm -hmm. and again, it's matching up the corners of the boat all the way to the side plates, okay. which is this piece here. This piece here, yeah. And then this right here has a cut edge on it from where I, my supplier, where I get the aluminum from, it's CAD CAM drawn out, so it gives a nice, fair, even look. Oh, okay. So what I'll do is I'll start up there, mm -hmm. and I'll tack it here, tack it here, and tack it here all yes. along. Yes. And what that does is it takes the shear line and takes the waviness out. Oh, it does. As well as up and down, and port in and out of starboard side, okay. and port side. So this really firms it all up. This actually firms it up, yeah. and it starts taking the shear line shape. 
Yes. Without yes. this on there, between all the frames, mm -hmm. would be a belly in or a belly out. I see, I see. So this is kind of important too, because when you're done grinding it, yeah. and you round it all off, you'll be able to see little imperfections if it hasn't been done right. Okay, all right, and then you've got this piece inside here, right? Yes, that's kind of the same thing, but what mm -hmm. it does is, this is called side combing, Yeah. and it takes the side deck on the inside yes. and keeps it from doing this. I see. Okay. And then it does the same thing. You line it up the same way. That way, when you look down the boat, it doesn't go up and down. Okay. So all these pieces have like a job to do. Yeah. When, like again, when we started at the keel, mm -hmm. we brought the lines out further, mm -hmm. and then to the bottom plate, mm -hmm. then to the inner chine, mm -hmm. then to the outer chine, mm -hmm. then to the side plate. Yeah then to the top shear, yeah. over to the side deck, and down onto the combing. Right. So that's right. where all the shapes come from. All comes together. Yep. Well, Bill, on a custom aluminum boat, there's the custom part is the nice part for the, for the customers. And, mm -hmm. and we're leaning against a forward seat here. This is a custom feature on this particular boat, right? Correct. Um, the customer decided that he wanted a forward, another forward compartment and integrate it with a seat. Mm -hmm. So inside here you have storage, as well as an anchor locker for storage. Okay. And this will be a hatch that folds up. All right. And this will be a waterproof compartment? Waterproof compartment. Yeah. Yep. With yeah. a guttered system on it. Okay. And the water will just drain off the front edge. All right. That's a nice feature. Now, yep. if we pan the camera slowly back, this uh, hatchway here, this is for storage? This isn't is it? another storage area, and there's also mm -hmm. a bilge pump down in there so you can access that. Keep that dry. Right. And then if we again move the camera slowly back, we'll start to see the fuel tank. How many gallons is that? 90 gallon fuel tank. Oh, that's a serious fuel tank, yep. yep. And then, of course, you've, you've built in some custom shelves yeah. along we, the side of the boat, another custom feature, right? Right, we, and we usually put stiffeners in there, but this time we decided to incorporate a shelf into it. Oh, you so did? So there's a okay. shelf going all the way down either side. So more storage. More yeah. storage. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of, uh, it's like an endless variety of someone can do on right. a custom boat like Correct. this, right? Yeah. Correct. Some people have rope hangers. Um, whatever they come up yeah, with. Yeah, that's neat. Dive tanks. <laughs> right? so, whatever. Sky's the limit. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> okay. Well, Bill, you know, we've talked about the fact that uh, aluminum is a lightweight and a durable material. And uh, we're back here at the stern. Everything it looks pretty heavy duty. Beautiful welds, very heavy stock here. What, uh, what sort of power are you thinking about mounting on this boat? This boat is going to actually have two 150 horsepower Yamaha motors on it. Okay. Now, I don't know if performance information or expectations are available for this boat, but do you have anything to compare it to, something similar you might have uh, run um, in the past? We've put the same size boat with one 150 horsepower on it, and it did like 36 knots. 36 knots, okay. Yeah. So you're gonna double up on this one. Yeah, so, so you're gonna go pretty good. In the 40s good. someplace, yeah. 40 knots someplace, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you, you're gonna go pretty fast. That's pretty good for and, uh, and it's just... gonna plane right off, and you'll be able to cruise where the engine's not running at full throttle. Right. So you can back on the throttle. And that'll and save, save your money on, money on, on, on the fuel, gas. Yeah. and you won't be hurting your engines at running full power. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's a that's a big advantage to using aluminum in the right. construction. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, Bill, uh, building boats out of aluminum is a little different. You don't see too many aluminum boats out there. Um, are there any using a material like this? Are there any special considerations to maintenance? There's really no maintenance. There, you, if you paint the boat. There might be a little maintenance on painting the boat. Yes. If it wear, the paint wears out, you might have to re-scuff it up and repaint it. But other than that, there's no maintenance. All right. All the maintenance would be the parts that you put on the boat. I see. You know, if you would put yeah. zincs on the boat, right. you would have to keep an eye on them when they corrode eventually. Mm -hmm. um, however, what kind of water you're in and where you moored your boat or park your boat. Yeah. Um, pretty much there's no maintenance on it. It does tarnish a little bit from the salt water, mm -hmm. but it doesn't affect the um, alloy at all. It yeah. just gives it a little pantene finish, I'll say. Yeah, yeah. And you could, if you want, didn't paint the boat, you could always go over it with a scotch bright pad mm -hmm. and get it back to the shine that Beautiful was shine. given you in the first place. What's our durability? What's the, what would the expected life of a boat like this, Bill? Uh, I would say years, lifetime, lifetime, but I, it, 20 years, no 20 problem. Years, no problem. We have yeah. boats that have been in the water for more than 20 years, yeah. and we just refurbished. Repower, repower right? Repower. Yep. 
maybe someone wants to put something else on the boat from yep. a previous owner that they had. And then away you go. And that's it. Yeah, yep. perfect. Well, Bill, you know, it's, it's tough to believe, but it's time to wrap up the show today. We've covered a lot of interesting ground from uh, custom loom boat design, materials, fabrication, just kind of a nice snapshot of the whole process. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up the show today? Well, Paul, I'd like to thank you for having me on your show. Mm -hmm. It was interesting showing you everything I have done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I enjoy doing it myself. Yes. And if anybody has any questions, you can call your local aluminum boat builder. Yeah. Or you can contact me at winninghuffboats.com in Raleigh, Mass. That's excellent. Thank you. And thank you, Smart Boating viewers, for joining us. If you have any comments or questions, join us at www.smartboatingus.com. Thank you.